And sometimes whether you get the answer you want or the answer you don't want, you discover God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. It's the same. I remember when our son Christian was three or four, and I took him to the doctor because I knew something was wrong and I couldn't. And they kept saying, no, he's fine. I'm like, no, there's something wrong. And they ran some more tests and then they said, um, you know, we will have the results by tomorrow morning. And I said to my doctor, you know, what does it look like? And he said, I'd rather just wait. And I said, I'd rather you just tell me right now. <laughs> and he said it, it looked like it could be leukemia. And I'll never forget driving home and Christian said that night, can I sleep in bed with you? And I'm like, yeah, do you yeah. want a pony? <laughs> <laughs> but Ask I was anything. up all night long, just yeah. praying and bringing him before the throne of grace and mercy. And the next day when we got the results that he was just anemic, I was over the moon. Mm -hmm. But I remember sharing that in a platform. And this woman came up to me at the end and she said, I got the other phone call. Yeah. And just as I'm about to apologize, she said, no, no, no. What you need to know is whether you get the answer you pray for, or the answer you dread, God is present. Yes, he God is. is there. I remember a time when my son, you know, got in trouble. And here I am, the pastor's wife, and he's the pastor's son. And we're teaching all of this faith and victory and, you know, whole life prosperity, thinking our family is living on top and everything mm -hmm. is perfect. And we get a call like at 12 o'clock at night says, we have your son for attempted murder. What do you do? <gasps> what do you do? Yeah. You know, and so I'm looking at my husband, I'm telling the man on the phone, I'm saying, you have the wrong wrong house, wrong house. He said, no, I have your son. I said, no, you don't, you have the wrong house. So he said, no, is your son named Joshua Frame? He's like, yeah. So I handed my husband the phone and my husband and I, we have this rule in the house that whoever loses it first <laughs> has the right to lose it. But the other like, one can. The other one can. <laughs> That's a good rule. That, that is know? a really good rule. Only one person can Only one it. person at a time. <laughs> Dang you. And so first. my husband beat me to it. I'm like, how do you beat the mama to it? You don't beat the mama to it. And I remember going to the um, to the court and they wouldn't allow us to see my son because of the the magnitude of the charge. And so we watched my son, he went down, you know, to the court and went that was walking down the hall with his hands behind his back and, you know, and just looking so pitiful and de depleted, defeated. And my my husband, he was crying, he was acting a fool. <laughs> And so I'm saying, okay, somebody got to give me a chance. Like, let me jump in there because I'm losing it. And my husband wouldn't get himself together. I'm talking about the pastor, okay? <laughs> right. Just the pastor. I'm saying, oh, dude, man. get it together, you know? And so he wouldn't get it together. So I just said, oh, you know what? Forget it. I'm tired of playing double dutch thinking I was going to have my time. Come on. And I just jumped in and I just lost it. With him. We just <laughs> cried. You're both you know, just pitiful, crying, not getting any resolve, not getting anything done. And I remember my oldest daughter, Brittany, coming to us while we were sitting there crying in the, in the courthouse. And my daughter looked at us and said, what are you doing? What are you doing? We said, huh? We we're crying. Can't you tell? Our son has been charged. She said, no, that's not what you taught us. You have taught us faith, mm. and you're going to have to get yourself together. You are crying oh. like this is the end of his story. Mm. Wow. This is not that's the powerful. end. Mm. And so you're going to have to get it together. And until we got all of the facts, really, we realized that my son really didn't have anything to do with it. You know, that's typical of moms and right. parents right. say, oh, not my kid. Yeah. No. It, it really was true. It really was true to say. <laughs> right. And so... After she began to minister to us, we got ourselves together and we began to stand and believe God. And I remember the scripture in Proverbs 11, it says, the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. Mm. And my son was exonerated, all charges dropped. He allowed somebody else to be in his car that he did not know, who took out a gun and shot it up in the air. And the homeowner of the place that they went to really was a witness for my son wow. Wow. to say he was not involved. But just think about all of that wasted time and all of that wasted energy yeah. that we were about to put into a situation. That was that, a lie. That was a lie. And but that's what falls. That's what fear does, fear right? Is you know we've it's heard all evidence appearing real. 
right? You're real. And what we do is we initially, it takes you off guard and it hits you in the face and it makes you want to lose it. But God says, no, we win in the end. You know, we, we win our battles. We don't have to struggle and stress and trip out like everybody else. If we take out that fear of dying, that fear of defeat, then we'll have the victory in the end. There is nothing that anyone watching today uh, goes through that we don't exactly. go through. We, we walk this walk along with everybody else. Right. And we have to stand firm in our faith. We have to believe what we're talking about yep. today. Right. We have to live to even tell people <laughs> a testimony mm-hmm. of God's faithfulness. Yeah. You know, and one of my favorite scriptures is Isaiah 41, 13. It says, For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand. Yeah. And I say to you, do not fear. I will help you. That's yeah. right. yes. You know, and those times of just going, I can't. I will not fear. If God is for me, who can be against me? I will not fear because God is holding my hand and He is going to help me. So when we speak, we have the same authority that Jesus had. And we can speak life and we can speak um, health and we can speak the goodness of God. And I think it's a powerful thing when it comes out from the inside of you, out your mouth. I think that's very powerful. You know, I remember a time when, um, you know, you and I've talked about this, just where um, our identity got stolen. And so then somebody stole all of our got into the bank and we never got that money back. Just how it happened. So we just didn't get it back. So when your finances get taken, you go, okay. Mm -hmm. So I can cry and scream and fight. And I, and I did all that. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like, so I had a moment. Right. Right. right? Mm -hmm. Because you're a girl. I'm a girl. girl. Right. So yes, the crying, the frustration, but then it came to. Is God my provider? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can He take what the enemy's stolen and yeah. bring back more? Can I trust Him even now? Yeah. Right? Even now yeah. in this moment. And I think that's a lot of times where people live when their child has been arrested. So yes. in that moment, yeah, it's not the end of the story. We're but fixers. Yeah. Yes, we are. You I know, want to fix it. And when you see that you have no means, no way of in the natural of fixing it, it's like, God, what am I going to do? You know? <laughs> that's so I wanted to that's go so the truth. Yank him out of there and say, it's okay, come on, you're going home with me. But I couldn't do that. Yeah. I had to use my faith. Faith is an interesting word. It's a word that we've used in all sorts of different ways within the church and the evangelical community over the centuries. And so often we use it almost against one another. Well, if you'd had more faith, this wouldn't have happened. And yet faith is it's a gift from God. If you find yourself in a situation right now where you're facing something and you honestly are afraid, ask God for the gift of faith. You know, when I was uh, growing up in Scotland, I, I lived quite close to a large mountain and a friend came back from Israel on vacation and she gave me a necklace and inside this tiny little glass ball was a mustard seed tiny little seed. And of course, that scripture from Matthew, if you had faith as tiny as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move. And I used to be so confused as a teenager, thinking, Lord, there's no way I could move that mountain. But the more I began to study scripture and dive into some of the most, you know, beloved commentators, I began to see that I placed the emphasis on the wrong thing. The emphasis not on our power to move the mountain. What Jesus was saying was, do you realize it just takes a teeny bit of faith? We just need the teeny bit of faith. It's God who moves the mountain. So if you find yourself facing a mountain of fear, ask God to just give you a seed of faith and you place that in Him and watch God move the mountain. I think the idea that we um, find ourselves, we're all going to face different fears, right? All of us have. I, As a mom, I always get, I hear these stories about parenting and moms and the fear that we carry as women for our children in the future. For me, it's always been this idea that I need to release my kids because I I don't want to be a helicopter mom, right? They're still teenagers, but as they go into adulthood, I don't want to be afraid uh, about their decisions. And so I have to remind myself that that God's perfect love casts out fear. So I have to remind myself, Lord, your perfect love for me, your perfect love for them. If you took the wind out of my lungs today, um, your love does not increase for my family. Mm. God's love is as big and as bold as it yes. is ever going to be right now. Yes. And so when I think that way, I think you've got them. Yeah. You've got them. You've got me. You've got them. 
and I'm able to rest in that. Unhealthy fear can actually control or manipulate your future and begin to shape a future that is unrealistic or untruthful because the wisdom you're receiving is coming from something that has no foundation. Uh, but we're all affected by this idea of insecurities or fears or not knowing what the future looks like. It's not one person is exempt from it. And sometimes whether you get the answer you want or the answer you don't want, yeah. you discover God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. It's the same. I remember when our son Christian was three or four, and I took him to the doctor because I knew something was wrong, and I couldn't. And they kept saying, no, he's fine. I'm like, no, there's something wrong. And they ran some more tests, and then they said, um, you know, we will have the results by tomorrow morning. And I said to my doctor, you know, what does it look like? And he said, I'd rather just wait. And I said, I'd rather you just tell me right now. <laughs> and he said it, it looked like it could be leukemia. And I'll never forget driving home and Christian said that night, can I sleep in bed with you? And I'm like, yeah, do you yeah. want a pony? <laughs> <laughs> right. But Ask I was anything. up all night long just yeah. praying and bringing him before the throne of grace and mercy. And the next day when we got the results that he was just anemic, I was over the moon. Mm -hmm. But I remember sharing that on a platform and this woman came up to me at the end and she said, I got the other phone call. Yeah. And just as I'm about to apologize, she said, no, 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 what you need to know is whether you get the answer you pray for or the answer you dread, God is present. Yes, yes. God is there, yes. God is real. That's good. And it was yeah. such a gift to me mm -hmm. from this beautiful woman who was walking through a struggle with her son. Mm -hmm. She said, no, you need to know God's as faithful yeah. when you get the bad phone call yeah. as He is when you get the good one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.